Coming up on Urban Outsiders, I try to inject some macho tranquility into a forgotten backyard. Mmm, the chainsaw. But I may have taken it a step too far. This is where Tom comes out and says, Mmm, I liked it how it was. Living in the city can be hectic, noisy and stressful. Grey and often a little soulless, they're a concrete jungle. But it doesn't need to be that way. I'm the UK city gardener Matt James, and I'm on a mission to bring a bit of green tranquility into the lives of urban Americans. This is Venice Beach, California, home to skateboarding legends the Z-Boys and, of course, Muscle Beach. It's a bohemian outpost of sprawling LA with these marvellous canals. It's got a true taste of Italy. I'm here to tackle the backyard of a laid-back bachelor whose space is just an urban wasteland. And I'm hoping to turn it into a, into a space where you can kind of just chill and relax and let the mellow vibes of this hip community wash over him like the surf on the famous beach. But this yard is not exactly a trendy, tranquil space that reflects the neighbourhood. And owner Tom can no longer stand looking out at his so-called garden. It's a constant reminder of, of my laziness that I haven't done anything out there. He may be a bit slack in the garden, but at work Tom's a high-flying sales director. And a hundred-mile round trip to work every day has left the yard at the bottom of his to-do list. I could really use a refuge or a sanctuary when I come home, uh, just somewhere that I can chill out, relax. So I've come to lend my green fingers to a garden that's desperate for a little bit of ingenuity. But is Tom ready to step up from high flyer to gardener? The worst possible thing that could happen design-wise, hmm, perhaps that plants would be used that I couldn't keep alive. I'm not too good at looking after plants. I've killed more plants than I've helped to survive. So this is your yard? Yeah, this is it. Interesting shape, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Definitely got some character. Um, what do you use the space for at the moment? Right now, uh, not too much, actually. Oh, right. You don't come out, I see a table and chairs up there, you don't come out and sit up there? Or? No, not really. That space is, although pretty cool, I, I really don't sit there much. It feels a little enclosed in to sit in. Sure, OK. Um, and then there's that little area around there. What do you use that for? A um, little bit of barbecuing every once in a while, but um, right now, once again, I'm not really using it for much. So then what do you want to use the garden for? I'd like maybe a, a refuge or a sanctuary to kind of come in and get away from the LA traffic and people and just a space to have to kind of be quiet and just chill out. Sure. There's a real sign of neglect in this yard. Not many of the plants have survived Tom's gardening skills but there's one plant that's beaten all the odds. Behind us, we've got this huge pot of carpus. Do you want to keep this? Is this something you like? Um, I like what it does. It blocks my neighbor from being able to kind of see into the garden, but um, it's a little bit out of control right now. It's out of scale with the rest of the garden, really. It is, it is. And it blocks a lot of sunlight, actually, so I think I'd get a little bit more sun in here if, sure. if, if they weren't here. For me, design-wise, this space is actually a refreshing change. Mm because it's not a square box. Cool. It's not the artist's blank page, where do you start? Right. It's got such character already by the very nature of the shape mm -hmm. and all the buildings. Mm -hmm. The problematic thing, I suppose, is to try and tie these three distinct areas together. And I can't wait to get it on the drawing board, show the design to you and get cracking. Cool, I look forward to it too. Coming up, Tom, the gardening rookie, gets to grips with the plans. Matt's design really looks good on paper, but I'm still, uh, I'm not sure. But will the design prove too much of a commitment for him? This is where Tom comes out and says, mm, I liked it how it was. Busy Tom is a successful sales director. Long daily commutes from Venice to the hub of LA's business world have left very little time for any progress in his backyard. 
a space he desperately wants to put to use. I'm now too good at looking after plants. I've killed more plants than I've helped to survive. His plant knowledge is also very limited. So with my design, I'm hoping to inject some enthusiasm so that Tom can not only enjoy the garden, but look after it too. I had some time to think about these bushes and I, I definitely think I'd, I'd like them to go, um, but I'm still a little concerned about the privacy issue. Um, sure, you don't need to bow 20 foot high. Right. Yeah. So we use some new reed screens okay. um, to provide privacy up to about five and a half, six foot. Right. But then planting, so then sort of grow up and provide some privacy up high. Okay. The three currently disjointed areas are going to be drawn together with an irregular stone path. And the focus of the design is a flexible seating area. One corner will house built-in seating and a fire pit, and the other a dedicated barbecue space, a man's real chill-out zone. It's quite straightforward, it's quite restrained, and it's quite simple. And I think that's what suits this space the best. Beautiful, I really like those ideas. Cool. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> so, the first task is to start clearing the space. But seeing all those dead plants being removed has made Tom a little nervous. Matt's design really looks good on paper, but I'm still, uh, I'm not sure. I'm worried about keeping the garden alive. I'd really like the garden to last for a few years. I plan on staying here. So um, I'm hoping that he's going to use plants that I can, I can kind of nurture. Although it seems a bit drastic, this hedge has completely taken over this side of the garden. So out it comes. It has been doing a great job of blocking out the neighbours, but also a lot of light. Let's hope Tom is with me on this one. Of course, the old handsaw is all right for the small ones, but when it comes to those big ones, I need to pull out the bad boy. Mm, the chainsaw. where Tom comes out and says, ooh, I liked it how it was. Now the whole hedge is gone, it's not just Tom that's been a little bit exposed. The neighbors stand there taking a shower. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the arrival of the stone gives us a timely distraction, and it's starting to give Tom a real flavor of what's to come. You see the, the flecks of silver yeah. and gold. Some nice colours in there. Yeah, it is, and it provides a little bit more interest than just plain grey, you know? Right, totally different shapes too. Everything's yeah. a little different shape, some big pieces, some small pieces. Exactly. Look at it when the sun hits it there. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now I'm starting to put the, put the pieces together. Yeah, yeah. Pun intended. Yeah, cool. Good stuff, good stuff. After working hard in the heat, we've cleared all the remains of Tom's neglected yard. Tom's very keen on outdoor entertaining, and what better than a barbecue to help get the party going? Back home in the UK, barbecuing is not for the faint-hearted. The English weather often makes it more gamble than gourmet, but over here, grilling is practically a national sport. Having a built-in barbie is fine in a big yard, but in a small space like Tom's, portable means practical taken on well, the middle ground when choosing one for Tom. It won't dominate the space, but it's going to be big enough to impress his buddies. Another day begins, and with the yard clear, you can see what a challenging shape it is. Time to draw those awkward corners together and get that paving down. It's a good job we brought in the experts. And while they're steaming ahead, Tom is keen to know about the plants he's going to be looking after. But I'm not going to make it that easy for him. I'm wondering if you might be able to give me a little tutorial on the uh, proper care and feeding of uh, all the, the plants and shrubs you're going to be bringing in here. Uh, most important thing is water. Okay. Hand watering for the first month, two months or so, especially in this climate, is the way to, that you're constantly checking that they're all doing OK. And as for each individual plant, what I'm going to do, be a bit sneaky, which I like to be, <laughs> um, instead of going around and labelling all the plants right from the off, all right. what I like to do is give you a long list of what's in, recommend a couple of books, you can then 
learn about the plants as well as identify them at the same time. That's actually a longer term solution for me because yes. I want to be able to care for the garden for years to come. Exactly. I think it's going great. I'm really pleased at the way uh, the garden has really opened up. There's a lot more light coming in. It feels like it's two or three times the size that it was before. Uh, I'm starting to take shape. I can't quite see how it's going to look. Still have a little bit of concern about the privacy, but uh, I'm imagining it being really beautiful. Coming up, Nervous Tom gets a reality check when all the plants arrive. And they're going to be robust plants. They're going to be easy to take care of. Easy to take care of, okay. yeah. To a point. A new day in Venice Beach, and it's going to be a busy one in Tom's backyard. The stone's down, and we're concentrating on fencing and planting to transform this neglected space into an ordered oasis of calm. The plants have finally arrived. As well as adjusting to foreign plant varieties, being a young lad from the UK, I'm also coping with a bit of a language barrier. I've got a great team with me, but they're mostly Spanish speaking. I'm trying very hard to make myself understood with little success. We need to get the bamboo up. Yeah. Okay, the fence. The fence. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice la? So the, the bamboo um, screen. No se ha puesto, ya lo pusieron. No, no todavía no. Hace falta poner el bambú. Sí. Sí, on, on, on the fence. Sí. So antes, if, if, antes de plantar. How do you say you and you? Tú y tú. Tú y tú. <laughs> Do the bamboo, okay. and then two it two. A, uh, what's me? Yo, yo. <laughs> Do the planting. Yeah. See. Okay. okay. What sound like a plan in Spanish? Vamanos. <laughs> I think Tom's diplomatic skills are more polished than my Spanish. There are so many people here that we're going to get this planting done in about five minutes. Meanwhile, Tom is eager to know about what we're planting and gets straight to the point. And they're going to be robust plants. They're going to be easy to take care of. Easy to take care of, okay. yeah. To a point. Not going to make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to make it easy. Still going to have to do some gardening. Still going to have to do some gardening. All right. Right, let's get these off. We're putting up some brand new reed screening over the old stuff to temporarily improve privacy until the plants take over. Because when you're standing here, that, yeah. height, that height's quite good, isn't it? Yeah. It's skirting the top of the window, so you're not seeing the window. Right, so you feel like you have some privacy, not, people aren't looking in yeah, on you. Yeah, because all the plants are going to grow up. The ivy's going to ramble yeah. over it as well. Right, obviously. the primary privacy is going to come from the plants. Yes, but that takes... That maybe a year or two yeah, years from exactly. now. Exactly. Now it's time to start the planting, and I am keen that Tom is as hands-on as possible. Depth-wise, you want to go as deep as the soil in the pot. OK. And about that much wider. All right. Fill it in around the sides, you're done. Beautiful. And the whistling starts. <laughs> Look okay? Look, looks good. Let's um, do this. Okay. So just a light tap down? Yeah, not elephants, but similarly you want to feel as though there's actually soil around it. Okay. And on big pots, I often then go in now, you see? Okay. And just lightly use my heel. And then we need to get the big boys in. See? What's the focal point going to be of the garden? What do you well, see? Well, the focal point is the table and chairs. It's going to be in a garden of this size, you can't get over that. Right. And then also the bench at the back with a fire pit. Okay. Simple as that. All right. It was sitting here, I'll link that area and it'll link that area. Okay. And that area is already starting to look cool, isn't it? It is very cool. We were talking about putting a sprinkler in that corner. Yeah. I think we should have one in, in all three corners. <laughs> our, our irrigation expert. What do you think, Leonardo? Tres or uno? Tres. Tres? Tres. Claro que sí. Sí? Sí. I've um, never seen pointing like this before. We don't do this in the UK at all. We use sort of semi-dry sand cement and pack it in. I've never seen it. It's like making a big cake, Luis. A big wedding cake. It's so quick as well. So quick. 
I wipe with a sponge, and it's sorted. I'm not really sure what I'm planting. It's some type of grass, some type of colored, colored desert grass, but I'm focusing more on how to plant it as opposed to what I'm planting, getting the right depth so I don't kill it before it gets started. It's a lot richer than I expected it to be. A lot more plants than I thought could ever possibly fit in here without looking cluttered, and it doesn't look cluttered at all. I'm really excited to see the finished product and, and to see the garden grow. Cool. That's a good day. Yeah, busy day. Done a lot, done a lot in the garden. Yeah, a lot, lot, lot accomplished today. A lot more than I thought we could in one day. Two thirds of the plants in, good third tomorrow. Okay. And we're done. Great, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. so am I. I'm uh, definitely gonna have to do my homework and making sure I keep this garden growing. Um, so, yeah, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, actually. You know, I'm really chuffed that Tom's taking ownership of this project. And the fact that everybody's working really hard on top of each other in such a confined space. But after everyone's gone home, I discover a bit of a problem. Oh, you've got a problem. Um, my benches have arrived. Now, I was going to make them out of these sleepers, and they're supposed to be untreated, but this lot are absolutely full of tar. And you can just see here just how much preservative has been impregnated into the wood. Um, now, obviously, you can't sit on this because you'll just be getting this all over your clothes. Just a, just a bit of a kick in the teeth. Um, so I'm going to have to go to plan B, which is a lot more work. So as the sun sets, all the hard landscaping is complete. And tomorrow, we're going to put the finishing touches to the planting. And if my carpentry skills are up to scratch, we'll have some seating too. Fingers crossed. Coming up. Will this new garden be a blessing or a burden for gardening rookie Tom? Now, some of these are going to die. Tom knows that his sad, neglected backyard has been long overdue some TLC. But he's been hindered by long commutes to the city and a self-confessed black thumb. His goal of creating a tranquil space that he can share with his friends and family is finally nearing completion. But we need one final push to put in the last plants and add those few finishing touches. Not only am I linking the three parts of this garden together with the paving, but I'm also doing it with the planting, especially these. This is rapsis, and these are commonly known as the lady palm. This is a thing that I don't get to use an awful lot of in the UK. It's a variegated aspidistra, also known as the cast iron plant. This is a fairly tough thing. It grows to about a metre high, and underneath this tree fern, it will provide wonderful bulk and contrast with these feathery fronds. Interestingly, in the UK, this is also known as the fiver leaf plant because the Victorians valued it so highly that they would sell each individual leaf for five pounds. That's about eight bucks. A lot of money for a leaf. I am really thrilled with how the seat has turned out. Although it's a little heavier than the railroad tires I was going to use. Oh. God, dear, it's a piece of engineering. Holy moly! And thank goodness this king-size barbecue's got wheels. Seven days ago, Tom wanted me to breathe new life into a neglected outside space that consisted of three areas that didn't seem connected at all. But we've turned this around, and with Tom's determination to learn about plants, after a week of hard graft, the difference is amazing. What's most noticeable is the increased light flooding into the garden and losing that hedge. But we've not lost Tom's privacy. And the stone paving works really well in pulling together the three separate spaces, which still retain their individual functions, though. It's become a tranquil, contemporary, entertaining garden with traditional touches that are provided by the planter. The trees and shrubs will eventually grow up and provide even more shade against the California sunshine. I think the garden should be easy to look after. 
but how well it does is going to be down to one person, that's Tom. Just how much does he want his oasis to thrive? So Thomas, how's it been for you? It's been uh, very interesting. It's been a uh, big learning process for me just to see how the garden goes in. Yeah. Um, are you happy with the result? Totally, I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. You hit a home run from, from my perspective. Cool. There's a lot of growing to do in this garden. Okay. Right. But generally speaking, most of it is just going to go ballistic. Right. Should you keep on top of the watering and should you keep on top of the feeding and bits and pieces like that. Okay. One of the challenges for me here was tying in the three areas together. Right. But I think it works quite well now that it just feels as one, really. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we got rid of the hedge. Me too. Me too. I was a little concerned at first, but yeah. no concerns at all. No, I'm it's, really glad it's made, made the garden the twice the size. So much bigger. Do you, do you have a favourite plant? Because you've been talking about lots of plants today. But, oh, I love that one. And I love, oh, Matt, I didn't know it. Yeah. But is there a particular one? Or I a do. That... Um, I, yeah. like, uh, I like the one. It's right around the corner here. And then there's... Uh, uh, another one back there. Um, the ladies. The ladies. Yes, <laughs> the, the ladies. ladies. <laughs> you know, I, I thought you might. <laughs> yeah, I, I really. They're, they're kind of a, just a strong plant. I like the, the shiny leaves, and uh, yeah, they have kind of a tropical feel to them. Sure. Yeah, I really, I really. Those are my favorite. What? You didn't use the garden before for anything, did you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. What are you going to use it for now? Um, a couple of things. Uh, talked about entertaining with friends and family. I'm definitely going to try to do that. Um, I'd like to just spend some time out here, maybe in the mornings. And uh, I think uh, probably when I come home after work, yeah. uh, having a place where I could uh, um, just let go of the stresses of the day. Sure. Um, so those are just a few things. I'm sure I'll use it for a lot more than that, but sure. those are the couple of things that come to mind. I was gonna, I was gonna say, you're gonna have a lot of stresses with that whopping great big barbecue. <laughs> yeah, amount, I know. The amount of people who are gonna be demanding food from <laughs> exactly, you. Exactly, okay. exactly. Really, really excited. Cool, man. Yeah, I am just hoping that I can do it justice by caring for it like I, I think you would have me care for it. Sure, so. right. Because of course you are now a gardener. I am a gardener now, You right. are now a gardener. That's right. You have no choice. <laughs> I have to say, I've really fallen in love with Venice. It's such a chilled and relaxing place. But when I first arrived at Tom's yard, it was anything but relaxing. It was just a dark, disorientated mess. Well, not anymore. I've managed to link these two nooks with the main part of the garden and give Tom somewhere to come and de-stress and relax after his horrible commute. And of course, where better to do that than his own private hideout?